All right, continuing on, we're gonna go ahead and draw the orbitals of fluorine. So we have, I'm gonna go ahead and do the off up diagram so then you guys can see that again too. So we have fluorine, it's one S, where'd it go? Two S. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly's featured in my video now. Huh? You're featured in the video now. I am? Yep. Then we're going to go to 2px, 2py, 2pz. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so for the 1s, it's going to be a small circle. And then we have for the 2s, it's going to be here. Okay, with the p orbitals, it's a little bit different. Okay, I know I draw them outside of the circle, but as soon as we add an other energy level, they actually drop down into the p orbitals, so you can draw them either way. So I'm gonna draw them, um, so 2px, we're gonna be on the x-axis, just like that. Then we're gonna do the 2py, just like this. And then the two PZ. And remember, these are dumbbell shapes. So the S is going to be a dumbbell. And P's are, or I mean, S is a circle. Oh my goodness. Sorry, guys. And P is a dumbbell. If you want to look at the other shapes, Go to the, if I could spell shapes, <laughs> go to the website because there is an extra credit question on the test that talks about shapes and you can look at the other shapes. Just a heads up. Okay, so the next part that we're going to talk about is, if it scrolls down enough, is right here. It's going to talk about if these are valid or non valid. So, how do we know if it's valid? Well, you can follow it along. Okay, so first off, we're going to go 1s2 is okay, 2s2 is okay, 2p6 is okay, 3s2 <laughs> is okay, 3p6 is okay, 4s2 is okay, 4d10. That is not okay. So it's going to be not valid. What should that be? That should be a 3d10 for it to be valid. Next one, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s3. That cannot happen unless electrons are getting excited, so it's not valid as well. That should be 3s2 if it's going to be valid. Ra is radon, and radon is not even a noble gas, so there's no way that's valid. Not valid. Then we have KR, Krypton, and then it's going to go 5s2, 4d10, 5p5. That is valid. That one's valid. <coughs> and I'm just using the periodic table to help me. Um, I think my image disappeared. Yeah, I should have an image there, right, girls? Mm -hmm. Okay, my image is gone. That's okay. Oh, it just has the wavelengths for us. It's easy. Perfect. Just has the wavelengths for us. Shelby, we are actually just going through the study guide together. Is that the study guide? No? Okay. Well, if you want to grab the study guide, we're going through the energy part right now, too, so follow along on that as well. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at the type of wave using the electromagnetic spectrum handout. Um, or you can use the picture above. I don't have the picture disappeared, so I'm going to be using either Dulce's or Gabby's picture. And then we're going to look at the wavelength, the frequency, and the energy. So let's talk about the equations first. We have our wavelength frequency, which is equal to C over F. And then we also have our energy equation, which is equal to HF. So we're just going to be using these to go back and forth. So if we have our frequency and we need to find our energy, we can go ahead and calculate that. We're going to do 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. We're just going to multiply these times 9.751 times, oops, times 10 to the 18th. 
we multiply these numbers, then add the exponents. I don't have a calculator on me. You can use my phone. <laughs> I have a calculator in my purse. Do you want to grab my pink purse right there? And there's a calculator in there. Here, go ahead. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll just I have my old school calculator that I love using. So we have 6.626 times 9.751. Is going to give us sixty four point six one zero times ten to the negative sixteenth. Okay, so we're making this number smaller, so this number has to get bigger. So it's going to be 6.4610 times 10 to the... Oh, mm -hmm. Am I supposed to get the sum of these two with this pad? Nope, so you're going to multiply these two together. So you're going to do this one and this one. Okay. Then you're going to multiply this one and this one. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to multiply this one and this one. Okay. Multiply all of those together, and then you're going to add them up. Yep, it should. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, so it should be what though? Mm -hmm. It should be if we make this number smaller, this has to get bigger. Which is bigger, negative fifteenth or negative seventeenth? Negative fifteenth. We <coughs> negative fifteenth. And then we look at sig figs. We should have one, two, three, four sig figs. So one, two, three, four. So your final answer should be six point four six one times ten to the negative. 15th joules okay now we can calculate our wavelength so we can go 2.998 times 10 to the 8th divided by 9.751 times 10 to the 18th Answers three or point three zero seven one two three four. We can only have four sig figs, so five. I'm gonna round up times ten to the negative tenth. We're making this number bigger, so that has to get smaller. So it should be three point zero seven five times ten to the negative eleventh. So if we look at our thing, if we look at our wavelength, <coughs> it is going to be meters. So that means we have to calculate or turn it into nanometers. So this is meters. So we're going to go ahead and convert it right here. In one meter, there is one times ten to the ninth nanometers. So negative twelve plus. 9 is going to give us negative <coughs> 2. So if we have a negative 2 exponent, so if it's 3.075 times 10 to the negative 2, that is going to be a microwave. Microwave. Questions on that at all? We're okay. What is the equation for this one? One meter equals what? One times ten to the ninth. This is what is this for? Nanometers. Nanometers. Hmm. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay, this one we're giving our energy. So we know we're going to have to take um, our equation, which is E is equal to <coughs> HF. We've got to find the F first, so we're going to divide by H on both of them. So it's going to be 2.61 times 10 to the negative 19th 
divided by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. Going to give us point three nine three. Oh, I'm going to round that now. Four, because we can only have three significant figures from this. This is a constant, so that can't be used as significant figures. And it's going to be times ten to the fifteenth. Making this number bigger so that has to get smaller so it's going to be 3.94 times 10 to the 14th. Just 2.6 times 10 to the 19th over this. Yep. That's our E over each. I think I have another one in my bag. I think I have one too. I don't want to move you. It's okay. <coughs> Okay, our next one is going to be our wavelength is equal to C times our, our C divided by our F. So we're gonna have 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 3.94 times 10 to the 14th. 2.998 <coughs> Divided by 3.94. That's going to give us 0 0.761 times 10 to the 8 minus 14, negative 6. Making this number bigger, so this has to get smaller. So it's going to be 7.61 times 10 to the negative 7. Look at our sheet. Negative <laughs> seventh wavelength is going to fall into. You can't see it on the paper. Negative seventh wavelength is going to put us right into here. So it is going to be a color. Oh no, more of the UV. I'm going to stick to the UV ray. Oh wait, seven? <laughs> wait. Look at the wrong one. Sorry, I was looking at the frequency. So it's going to be right around the red range. So it'll be in red color, or also known as infra red rays. Next, what we have <coughs> this in meters, so we can go ahead and convert that. And oh wait, we didn't convert it into nanometers. Time out. We missed a step. Erase. Come on, girls. You're supposed to be helping me out. Gotta convert it into <laughs> nanometers first before we figure out what it is. Ten. <coughs> okay, so this is meters. So it's gonna be one times ten to the ninth, so it's gonna be negative two. Oh no, just two. Right? Two? Yeah. Yes. Two. two. Okay. <laughs> Seven point six one times ten to the second. So that's gonna put us at AM radio waves. Radio waves. So let's convert this one to nanometers first. So 1 times 10 to the 9th. So that's going to give us 7th. So it's going to be 5.8762 times 10 to the 7th. And that's going to put us at... long radio waves. Okay, if you do not know how to do this, then you can go ahead and look at this exponent here and actually find it on your uh, wave spectrum. And it'll be the wavelength on the bottom. <coughs> also, you can look at your frequency too and make sure that it matches up with the same wavelength too. So you can find it from frequency. Frequency is the numbers on tops, wavelengths is the numbers on bottom, and it is in nanometers. Make sure you're in nanometers, otherwise it's not gonna work. So we can find our frequency now. And to find our frequency, it's gonna be our wavelength times C. 